What propaganda did you totally buy into, only to realize later it was bullcrap? Story 1. Being a card-carrying liberal, basically. Being hardcore, no exceptions Democrat. It's all I grew up with. When I was older, I realized my dad was literally the liberal version of the common caricature of a conservative. Small-minded, hateful of ideas that don't mesh with his, angry, condescending, etc., It made me realize it's a problem on both sides of the aisle, getting enmeshed in your ideas that you can't think logically anymore because it doesn't jive with what your team thinks. I no longer hate conservatives, and I don't hate liberals because of this either. The communism was the solution to all ills. I had a teacher in high school who said things like, America took 250 years to become a developed country, while Russia only took 70. China went communist and became rich in 50 or 60 years, while India isn't convinced most of us that communism was the only way to solve all the problems. Except that India had actually been under heavy Soviet influence, and had tried the planned economy and communism model. It was all ugly government buildings, shortages, import substitution, poverty, people dying, brain drain, and no enterprise or industry other than from people related to or friendly with the people in power. This model failed in 1991 as a side effect of the Gulf War, and we had to open up our economy. Within a decade, even with really basic reforms, the pace at which people came out of poverty was staggering. This teacher was telling us this in 1999, the same year the Indian software made a huge killing from fixing Y2K and moved a lot of people who were living paycheck to paycheck to the upper middle class. Just a few years ago, it has been impossible to even get computers as an entrepreneur because there were so many expensive taxes and no local manufacturers. I think I'm too dumb to understand any of what he just said, so people in the comments, please feel free to educate me and let your views be known. Story 2. That the only way I would be able to succeed in life is if I had a college degree. I had good jobs that I loved and made decent money to live comfortably and take care of my daughter. My sisters are both in nursing, but I got married and became a mom at 20. My mother hounded me for years and years to get a degree. That I needed to set a good example to my daughter and go back to college. My husband wanted me to be happy, I was at the time as a travel agent, but my mother would not drop it. Then during the recession, I lost my job and was at home. My mom picked me up one day for lunch, and we ended up in the admissions office of a local Brown Mackey College. I ended up two years later with a vet tech degree and $30,000 in debt. Can't get a job because it's expensive, qualifications that I need to go with said degree. I am now an assistant manager of a Burger King restaurant, making about $6 more per hour than if I was a vet tech. I'm now 40. My daughter is up and out and is very proud of me. I love hearing stories like this that highlight that there are other options than going to college if you want to have a lot of money and have a happy life and all that. I definitely think in the U.S. there's a lot of pressure to go to college, and it seems to be painted as this end-all, be-all, that's what you have to do if you want to succeed in life, but it doesn't always work out the way that they say it should. I went to college, for instance, studied mathematics and computer science, but afterwards I meandered through some jobs in tech and audit and things that didn't really feed my soul, and ultimately I ended up leaving that, and now I'm just reading stuff off the internet, and I'm way happier for it. At the end of the day, I think it comes down to hard work, a fair amount of luck, and just knowing what you like and learning what you don't like, and then listening to your heart and following where that takes you. Story three, that carrots give you exceptional night vision. I later found out that that particular belief became widely accepted due to a British propaganda campaign from World War II designed to hide the invention of radar from the Germans. They claimed that the reason their Air Force pilots were so effective at night was due to them being fed carrots to increase their night vision. It was so effective that people still tout that particular benefit of carrots years after the war ended. Edit a couple of corrections. While carrots are rich in vitamin A, which helps you prevent your eyesight from deteriorating, they still do not give superhuman vision like the propaganda claimed. The myth isn't that they are good for your eyesight, it's an exaggeration of how effective they actually are. Also, I was incorrect when I said that the British were trying to cover up the invention of radar. They were, in actuality, trying to cover up an advancement in radar technology that they didn't want the Germans finding. Story 4. That the only way to achieve success in life is to study hard, get top grades, and go to university and study something like law or medicine. Plenty of people I know have achieved success and happiness without top university education. I also believed the idea that the career you study for is for life. 
edit to add, I meant that you don't need to have a top degree from a top university. Lots of people choose TAFE, like I did. I think it's called technical college in the U.S. Study something you enjoy, as long as you can still make a living from it. I was all set to study law myself, but I realized that I wasn't that passionate about it, and I took some time off to figure out what I wanted to do. Yeah, this is what I was saying before. Money does not equal happiness in every aspect. Sure, it can make your life a little bit more comfortable and put your mind at ease in some regards, but ultimately, happiness is derived from fulfillment, and that comes from things outside of money. It comes from purpose and feeding your soul and building relationships with people you love. Story 5. That feminists are these extreme, delusional, and crazy people. I used to love those YouTube videos of people owning feminist social justice warrior idiots. Found it so entertaining, I almost got sucked into that entire skeptic, alt-right side of the internet. Luckily, I came to my senses after a short while and realized that, number one, the majority of feminists are just regular people who want equal rights and treatment for genders. And number two, falling down a rabbit hole of extremism is easier than I thought, especially if you're an impressionable teenager with too much free time and a re for justice, triple X. Story six. Christian purity culture tries to masquerade as protecting your heart and other such BS, but it really just perpetuates so much harmful crap. Examples, telling girls to cover up so they don't tempt the boys, as if seeing a bra strap gives a guy the right to do or say anything, ignoring the fact that girls have libido as well, and basically teaching them that their natural desires are wrong, making it difficult for them to communicate what they want even if they are married, targeting girls with most of the no intimate stuff before marriage talk, because if you give away all your flower petals, you won't have anything special to give your husband on your wedding night. Because that's how vages work. Most of the bull crappery is directed at women, but it ends up being harmful to everyone. There's a great podcast episode from Ear Biscuits with Rhett and Link from Good Mythical Morning that discuss this exact topic. They bring their wives on to discuss when they first lost their virginity and how purity culture negatively affected that whole experience. It's called Losing Our Virginity Featuring Our Wives, Ear Biscuits. Story 7. Everyone on my political spectrum are all good, and everyone on the other side are terrible people who have absolutely nothing to offer in a discussion and no valid opinions. In middle school, they made us take political party quizzes to see what we would vote for. It became this whole versus them atmosphere. This only became worse when my parents would be talking about the other side. They were all idiots. I firmly believed growing up that anyone opposite to me on the political spectrum are evil, dumb people, and any points that may align with them are bad. I believed you had to be all or nothing. I was very close-minded. Story 8. Carrots improve your eyesight. Everyone knows this, right? Bull crap. British propaganda. In World War II, when the British started using radar, all of a sudden they started drowning enemy planes like crazy, especially in the night. Radar was the reason, but freaking carrots was the excuse. They spread that crap like crazy. In newspapers, scientific journals, radio, TV, you name it. Carrots give you improved sight, and I bet your parents still believe it. It's pretty much common knowledge to everyone I bring it up to. But the truth is carrots are no better for your eyesight than any other vegetable. I would have thought potatoes would have the best eyesight, because of all their eyes. Story 9 that most people achieve success in their lives during their 20s. This is bullcrap, and the grander scheme of things, lots of super talented people end up becoming successful in their late 30s, 40s, and even 50s. The same goes for the concept of, if you want to get good at something, you have to start super young. Which does sometimes work, but a lot of people can actually get good at a skill in older ages. You can learn the piano in your 30s and get really good at it, but you're not going to be doing concerts or anything but it doesn't mean that you're not good or great or exceptional at it. To me, I think it just all comes down to dedication, and it seems like it's a bit harder to dedicate yourself fully to something the later you get in life, because you have less energy, less time if you're busy working to try to sustain your lifestyle, and maybe less of a willpower, because you've got just so many other things on your mind. But a lot of people are still able to overcome those things and achieve something great late in life. Story 10 that the Republican Party was a massively Christian-based group and cared only about the best interests of the American people, and that Democrats were evil communists that were the cause of the division in our country. Yeah, 
Funny thing was, the more I enveloped myself into Christianity, the more I realized how full of crap the people around me were and how much they were twisting the Bible to fit their own opinions. That they were relying on everyone else's lack of knowledge of the Bible ended up leaving my church and denouncing the Republican Party ever since. Story 11. Clinton 2016 fell for a lot of Republican propaganda and later eventually bordered on becoming alt-right from further than Republican propaganda and had some somewhat racist and sexist views, not to an extreme, but somewhat questionable. Needless to say, my views have drastically changed over time. I was about 13 or 14 at the time that I had those views. Definitely glad I've changed. Wouldn't have been able to meet a lot of the people I know and adore today if I stayed in that narrow frame of mind. Story 12. I bought into the abstinence until marriage crap in middle school, when they made you sign all the fancy pamphlets about why it's the right thing to do, really felt it would stop my fellow classmates from doing it until marriage. My belief in that fell apart in high school. A teammate on my football team would tell stories in the pregame time for JV games about how he had banged some girl over the weekend. I can still remember three specific stories, one of which was how he had done it while wearing a Ziploc baggie instead of a condom. Story 13. That voting third party in 2016 was a good idea because if the votes hit some type of threshold, it would help us move away from the two-party system in the future. Worst part is, is that not only did I fall for it and voted for Gary Johnson, but now I also see that same bullcrap going around this year with one of the Green Party candidates. Story 14. For a little bit there, I was listening to Ben Shapiro and got wrapped in all those Ben Shapiro Thug Life compilations on YouTube where he owned social justice warriors. Then one day I realized that Ben's just a fast-talking rich kid who speaks from a position of privilege. Who is he to judge these college kids? He jumped from high school to college to Harvard to Goodwin Proctor. He's never had to struggle financially like so many in this country have. What the frick does he know about the real world? Story 15. I totally feel for the whole communism as a concept isn't a bad idea bullcrap when I was in school. Then I realized that something wasn't adding up when you considered why it has been tried so many times and never succeeded. That was when I finally understood the true reason communism always fails. People are buttholes and communism can't work if even a single person is anything other than completely selfless. That's just not in human nature. Sorry, maybe heaven is communist, but not earth. Story 16. I was a communist for like a year. Communism is an ideology that only works on paper. An ideology that thinks that people that have been killing each other for hundreds of years will come together and work for a common purpose. It's an ideology that only works in a world where everyone is lawful good and selfless, not to mention the historical revisionism and cult of personality around people who committed genocides, Stalin, Mao, Tito, etc. Thankfully, through research, I started to slowly chip away at it and realize the truth. Story 17. Most of the anti-Japan crap online I listened to when I was a kid, but now I realize that most of that crap isn't true. Edit, I'm from America, but I grew up around others who were very racist against Asians, mostly Japan, because they saw their culture as backwards compared to America. The propaganda online isn't as common today, but it was more common when I was little. I think with a lot of this, especially with cultures, it's just about exposure. If you study abroad or you live in a different country for a while, you come to see their side of things, and then it doesn't seem so alien. Story 18. I used to be big into conspiracy. Alex Jones was right. Clintons are actually alien lizard people. And all sorts of crazy stuff. I even believed Obama was a secret agent Muslim going to install martial law and kill all non-Muslims. It got to the point I was even considering grabbing guns. I even thought about if I attacked a mosque that I could help stop the Muslim takeover. It took so long to get my mind straight. And that's why spreading information is so powerful and can be so destructive. I'm really glad this guy didn't fully succumb. Story 19. Creationism. Science was my worst subject in high school, and bio was my weakest science. And while I grew up and am still Presbyterian, the Christian groups at both my high school and college were deeply evangelical learned all their arguments without hearing the actual evidence. Then I met an actual scientist and tried to tell him this crap. Set me straight pretty quick. Story 20. That I need a creative career to be happy. It breaks my heart to admit I spent years grinding for a chance at an interesting career and didn't get very far. And worse, I was okay with being underpaid for the experience. 
Now I kind of wish I took on a regular, well-paying job and used my free time to travel and pursue my own passion projects. Story 21. 9-11 Conspiracy Crap While I wouldn't be surprised if good evidence was revealed the government had a hand in it, and I'm confident the government's perpetual war in response to it is immoral and money-driven, I don't really think there is reliable enough evidence to make a claim on it being a false flag or not. Story 22. Material goods are unimportant and meaningless. If it's one thing lockdowns have taught me, it's that all those little things, grabbing a coffee, going to a museum, are actually what makes day-to-day life worth living. It's not only okay to care about that stuff, you're supposed to care about it. They're a part of your experience and a reflection of your personality. Story 23. That soda rotting your teeth is a myth. I read it when I was in fourth grade waiting in the school's office in a science magazine where a scientist had submerged baby teeth in soda for over a month, and they were perfectly fine. It's needless to say that my elementary school had a lot of soda machines. Story 24. Trying to be an Instagram model, specifically putting my energy into looking a certain way and gaining massive amounts of followers. As a recent college graduate, I have realized how dumb it is to try to conform to this trend that is imposed on young girls. I'd much rather focus my energy on more fulfilling things. Story 25. Most of these comments are about cults and stuff, but from my understanding of propaganda, which is basically ads to get you to do something, I totally bought the play this inappropriate game for free and then asked for my credit card info. I fell for this quite a few times, sadly, to realize that's bullcrap for anything that says for free. Story 26. The war on drugs. I've always been against any drug while drinking my liver out like the perfect anti-drug stereotype. I've never felt so stupid and ignorant once I smoked weed for the first time and started reading actual studies with hard data. Story 27. When I was growing up as a kid in the United States of America, I really did believe that the United States was flawless and the absolute best country in the world. Now I'm realizing that the U.S. has many issues, many flaws, and it's actually difficult to argue it as the best country in the world. Story 28. That I was responsible to support my mother emotionally like it was my job. My whole family got in on this and let me be the emotional punching bag. I wised up at 25, which started a whole other crazy roller coaster. But it was amazing to realize that, no, I am not required to prop up another emotionally. Story 29. I used to be an alt writer. Thankfully, I realized how disturbing this ideology was, and I stopped believing in it completely. I am still ashamed of having ever thought that, for example, homosexuality is a sickness. Edit. I explicitly said that I am no longer an alt writer, and I hate it. Story 30. Trivial, but I bought into the lie that the more you cut hair, the more it grows. I've been shaving my beard for years, hoping to get a nice thick bush to no avail. I just have to accept that nature played me and deal with my patchy face hair. If it's any consolation, look at all the cool guys that have patchy facial hair. Keanu Reeves, Pedro Pascal, Matthew McConaughey. Facial hair doesn't seem to matter as much if you're just talented, buff, or really kind. Story 31. There is a normal, and everyone around you is normal. This normal makes them happy, but it's blissful ignorance. Turns out normal doesn't exist. Everyone's just hiding everything, because they want to fit in with all the normal people. Hi, how are you? Lovely weather we're having. Okay, see you around. Story 32. In good universities, you'll receive a good education. Hell yeah, my hair turned white due to stress. Congrats. I study at one of the prestigious unis in my country, and how they deal with corona and online courses should not be experienced by anyone. Story 33. Tumblr feminism. I spent my childhood on the internet, and I think it led me to believe in a lot of crappy things. It's easy to say, oh, it's just sick people online. Unfortunately, modern society has leaned towards them now. Story 34. That I need to look young forever. Women are sold so many skincare products and cosmetic procedures to stay looking young, then I realized it's not really affecting my health if I just age naturally, so I can just not give a crap and live my life unafraid of wrinkles if I want to. Story 35. Okay, in kindergarten, the teachers at my school literally dressed up as pilgrims and Indians and made us sing all these songs about the feast and how we all got along with one another. So imagine my shock when I learned about the Trail of Tears and other atrocities later in life. Story 36. 
Mission trips are for helping others. Really, it's just a huge ego boost for many people who want to exploit people's needs to feel better about themselves. Plus the whole part where it might actually be more harmful than helpful. Story 37. That there's a meaningful difference between the two American political parties. They have different messaging and they'll fight over whatever bullcrap, but at the end of the day, it's all just a unified bipartisan effort to transfer wealth upwards. Story 38. Masturbatory actions in front of a crowd of chickens helps release the fear of talking to a coworker one on one. Never tried in front of a live crowd, only chicken farm pictures on the internet. I still don't have the confidence to talk to my coworkers. Story 39 That the popular jocks peak at high school. The most popular jocks in my class have successful careers with high paying jobs, built stable families, and have overall comfortable, good lives. They have done better for themselves than the geeks of the class. Story 40. My government says we are a democracy, but we are actually a one-party system, and our leaders are morons who spend millions on parades. By the way, I'm not from China or North Korea or Russia. Story 41. 100% believed in the whole, the Bible is entirely literal thing, and other Catholic propaganda, such as gays are evil, which is funny considering I'm a lesbian. Story 42. Anti-vax. At one point, I was completely sold on the whole, how can you inject infants with dangerous chemicals crap? Then I read up on the actual science and realized how uninformed I was. Story 43. Indestructible dog toys. I watched one dog tear a Kevlar toy like a baboon ripping into an orange. He's a sweetheart, but all the toys around him are disposable. Do you guys say baboon or baboon? I used to say baboon, and that might be the correct way to say it, but baboon is so much more fun. Same way I say squirrel, it's more fun than squirrel. And squirrel, I think, is the English way to say it. Also, penguin. Story 44. Democrats, good. Republicans, bad. Now I realize that they're both just two sides of the same crappy coin. Story 45. Santa Claus, ultimate communist propaganda. Work your butt off year-round until you're made to hand deliver products to anyone who believes in the system. Story 46. That capitalism is the ultimate economic system, and that it works very well all the time, every time, and is self-regulating, as well as being more ethical than any other economic system. Story 47. That there's a map of taste buds on your tongue that tastes sweet, salty, and sour. I may or may not have taught this to a class of third graders many, many years ago. Story 48. In high school, I bought into the idea that all the problems in the world were caused by billionaires and capitalism. Darn was I wrong. Story 49. American exceptionalism. I've come to believe it's not absolute. Yes, we are exceptional, but so are a lot of other countries. Story 50. When my mom says that I can tell her anything and should see her as a friend, and when I finally confide in her, it turns into a lecture. Story 51. When I was 14, I read Atlas Shrugged and swallowed that libertarian crap like fresh peen. How embarrassing. Ah, yes, you definitely want the fresh peen. You don't want the rotten peen. That's gross. Story 52. When I was a teenager, I thought that everyone over 30 is old and doesn't understand me. I was a freaking idiot. Story 53. I totally bought into that ridiculous Denver airport conspiracy for a few months after a friend showed me it in high school. Story 54. The weird rules of Islam. Religion doesn't allow us to do so many things, only to realize that it's BS. Story 55. The Patriot Act, or rather the notion of the nothing-to-hide, nothing-to-fear approach to privacy rights. Story 56. The money-hungry lady suing McDonald's for millions for spilling coffee on herself story. Story 57. Chiropractic as healthcare. This was a side effect of growing up with my anti-vaxxer mom. Story 58. I spent the majority of my teens watching Fox News with my parents. Literal propaganda. Story 59. Tons of people think COVID-19 is BS propaganda, so that's horrifying. Story 60. The internet is an interesting place where you can share your thoughts and opinions. Story 61. It's a slippery slope and it's not something I want anyone to go down on. Story 62. That different sections of the tongue are responsible for sensing different flavors. Story 63. Trickle-down economics. Screw that. Every penny that makes it to the top gets hoarded there. Story 64. I paid for LimeWire. I live with that shame every moment of my life. 
Story 65. That Canada is real. I can't believe I thought there was a mass above the U.S. Story 66. The consumerist bubble. We're born into it. Story 67. The Maple Leafs will win a Stanley Cup in the next few years. Story 68. The anti-drug campaigns we all had to listen to as a kid. Story 69. Orion's fanny pack was actually Orion's belt. Freaking Uncle Steve. Story 7. D. College is required to be successful. Absolutely untrue. Story 71. Free and fair elections in American politics. Story 72. Pet rocks. All they did was lay around. Total ripoff. Story 73. Ooh, this is dangerous on the internet. Story 74. I upvoted a guy on the internet only because it was his cake day. Story 75. That marriage is a requirement for having a life partner. Story 76. That the Trump campaign colluded with Russia. Story 77. That my mom won't get mad at me if I tell the truth. Story 78. I almost fell for a pyramid scheme twice. Story 79. GMOs are dangerous for your health. Story 80. As a teen, console wars. Story 81. Trickle-down economics. Story 82. American exceptionalism. Story 83. Hashtag believe all women. Story 84. Ayn Rand objectivism. Story 85. The Democratic Party. Story 86. Australia. It's a hoax. Story 87. Iraq had weapons of mass destruction. Story 88. Coney 2012. Story 89. Dare. Story 90. Dare. Story 91. CNN. Story 92. Obama. Please leave your stories in the comments. I'd love to make a video of them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.